This is part five, the school incident. Only on NBC5 News tonight, a Grants Pass Elementary School has a new mascot. Well, not exactly, but one- I went to Allendale Elementary, the visit that made Cosmo famous in the weeks before his disappearance, to see if the crow left any clues in his wake. I talked with Jake Musser, who's been the principal at the school for 12 years and has never in his career seen anything like Cosmo. How did the day start? Was it like a normal day? Normal school day, and I got word from a teacher that there was a crow in a classroom. The teacher told me the crow talks and I thought this teacher's losing it. But I had to hear it and see it from my own eyes and ears and so walked down to the classroom that the crow was in and sure enough there was a crow on the back table and then the crow did truly start talking and didn't have the most appropriate language that it used. What did you perceive the crow to be saying? Back off but it wasn't back off. It was a different different word, using the F word. But what we told the kids was that the crow was saying back off, he wanted space, um, he didn't want to be bothered, and it did work. The kids you know, were very respectful of Cosmo and gave him his space. School staff wrangled the crow from the fifth grade classroom to the outdoors, but to their surprise, he didn't fly away. He wanted to be around kids. It was, it was evident, like he wanted to be where the kids were. The kids were actually going out to morning recess and Cosmo found his way over to the playground. He was doing the dive bombing thing. The kids <clears throat> loved it. They're laughing and having a good time, but then you'd hear these screams. Because at that point, Cosmo was diving down towards the kids, never hurting them. Cosmo knew exactly what he was doing. Didn't ever really land on a kid, but would just dive down enough just to kind of make them so they had to duck down. And then he would swoop back up and go land on another structure. And I remember at that point, I'm like, I need to call somebody. He called Fish and Wildlife, who sent out an officer with a large net to catch the bird. It didn't work. She struggled with trying to get Cosmo in the net. Cosmo caught on real quick, realized what she was up to. Um, so we avoided her, but stayed with the kids. But at one point he was knocking on the front door. So a student let him into the front door. He ended up in our office flying around our office, my office manager and the secretary and I are now trying to figure out a way we can catch Cosmo because now we got him in a tighter space. We're like, okay, now we can catch him, but we don't want to hurt him because he, he's a very friendly crow and pretty cool. And so we try a box and we can't get him in the box. You know, most birds will like run towards, fly towards windows. He knew better than that. He was the smartest bird I think I've ever seen. Another officer arrived, Oregon State Police Trooper Marty Marchand. But Cosmo had law enforcement stumped. It must have been frustrating. I tried to gauge whether police might have done something to Cosmo. I think it would probably scar our children if something bad happened to this crow. So even when she was trying with the net, did he I, offer to shoot the bird? I think he said there were options out there. I know Marty for a while and I just kind of sense like maybe that's one of the options, I don't know. But I did make a comment that, yeah, let's not hurt the bird in any way because it's a living thing and the kids really enjoy it and uh, we don't want any, any kids scarred from, you know, the bird being hurt. The Cosmo incident has become a kind of folklore to the current and past students at Allendale Elementary. I spoke with 12-year-old Takoa, who was in the fifth grade classroom that day. Was that like an epic day? If you were to say epic, I would update that to legendary. A bird coming into your classroom, that's like a one in a lifetime thing. Like that's only happened to me once and that was Cosmo. They still talk about it today. And Takoa actually knew Cosmo from before the school incident. His parents are friends with Cosmo's owners, Janelle and Dewey. He doesn't like us, he likes Janelle a lot, but like he still sometimes like jumps on my shoulder. Were you scared of Cosmo at all? Sometimes, sometimes I was pretty scared. Mostly when he bit me on my head. Like he would peck a little bit? Yeah, peck and like kind of bite too. Do you think that he was being mean or he was playing with you? What do you think he was doing? I don't really know. He was probably playing with me though. And Takoa had an alternative explanation for Cosmo's allegedly foul mouth. One of their dogs' name is Truck and they say he said Truck a lot, which is super cool. Takoa said some of the younger kids were scared of Cosmo. There was an element of danger, but overall his visit was welcome. I'd say one third of the kids were scared, but two thirds, they thought that was sick, that a pro came into their classroom. And sick, like sick is cool. Yeah, sick, cool. He brought so much joy and, and laughter to our staff and students that day that like I told my daughter and she'll probably tell her kids and I'll tell my grandkids. Cosmo was a, he was a good crow. Jake is one of the first people to arrive at the school each morning, and the following day, Cosmo was back, pecking on the front door to be let in. But by that time, Janiel's daughter was already on her way with a cage to pick him up. She coaxed him with some tuna, got him in the cage, and drove him home. 
the school posted about the Cosmo visit online. When we posted it on Facebook, we got a phone call almost immediately after the post that had said, basically, don't send this crow back to this lady because this crow is a danger. Be careful with her, it around the kids. And we had seen so much of it that day, I thought we hadn't seen any of what, what this neighbor was saying. But the neighbor, I think, didn't really appreciate Cosmo and all of his antics at home. This was interesting. It seemed Cosmo had made friends in Grant's Pass, but perhaps someone who lived near Cosmo didn't want him to come home. It was time to go back to Williams. 